Now let's see if we can get these boots off this corpse before we let it get taken away. The man is decomposing visibly now. Every hour he looks less like a creature and more like a pile of intestines. He adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Right, tell you what we're going to do, we'll try and remove the boots. I thought we decided to leave it to process him. The lieutenant shakes his head. Let's not turn this into some kind of circus. Ah, we need to come back when he's not here, don't we? Try it again? No, can't do that. Perception. Mmm, 8%. <laughs> Quite like a 10%. A 1 in 10 chance of this working. Fuck it. It's only going to get taken away. We might as well try. Failure. You run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with his swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. Look in his pants again. I can't want to look in his pants. The genitals in his breeches continue to be unnoteworthy. You see the penis of a dead man. If you've seen it once, you've already got the picture. <laughs> Fuck, I can't get enough of that dick. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Yeah, there's something we're definitely not seeing. Okay, well we're in live or mortis here. He's disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination and we need to do it fast. Okay, where do we find a fridge for the body? It would have to be industrial in size. Let's start by asking God at the Whirling in Rags and the Freet store down at the gates. If they don't know, his voice trails off and his gaze settles on Kuno, but only if all else fails. So if, if all else fails, we can see Kuno <laughs> and see if he can help us. Fuck are you looking at, ping pong man? You want a piece of Kuno? Want to get fucked? Only if all else fails. We'll have a little look at the body first. Fridge the victim's body. This is one task we cannot sideline. So look, it's one, 25 past 1 now. That's it. We've done everything. Soon you'll be looking for clues in a pile of sludge and bones. Let's leave. Okay then. First port of call is... We might as well head back. To go and see the the barkeeper. Because the... When did it open up? Did the kitchen open up at 2 o'clock? Did they say? It's nearly 2 now. have a quick look. Oh, it's open look. I'll ask him first. Can I help you? Here's your trash container key. There we go. Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. Just trash. Because we don't know if he's the killer or not, so I'm not going to spook him or anything. Right. I seem to be in need of a fridge. Yes, yes, for the dead body. You want to put a dead corpse into my fridge, right? <laughs> Flattery is the way. Yeah, we've heard you had it like a huge fridge. I want to say yes, that's the gist of it. Well, I have a fridge and you're not putting it here. Why? Because this is a culinary establishment, not a morgue. I can't believe you even asked me. It would only be for a... That's Kim. <laughs> Lieutenant, you too? He can't believe it. You're asking to? No, the answer is no. I will not turn this place into some kind of macabre circus. Wow. Turn the lieutenant off like he was busted old radio. He really is the lord of his realm. Hmm. Wait there. I want to say it again. Flattery is the only way. How did you know? Because you haven't taken it away yet and it must be stinking hard out now. Well, you're not putting it in here, rest assured. I'm not even going to ask why. Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. 
So, it looks like we're not going to be able to do that. Goodbye. So where else did they say? Fridge the victim's body. Freet. I need to find a, sh a place, a shop called Freet. Is that like an ice cream department? Or oh, is that what's attached to this building? Or is that a news agent? Freet. What is this? Fuck the police. Well, that's pleasant. Pigs go home. Goods from the lorry haphazardly litter the surroundings. Ooh, some more magnesium. Oh, there's fruit. Good, good. I want to go in here first. Oh, is it an ice cream shop, is it? A melancholy pop song plays on the radio. Tear machine. A tear machine stands on the corner. A sign says one bottle, ten cents. What is it? That's a tear machine. Yes, but what is it? It's a machine for tear, you know. You find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine. Then it gives you money. Oh, so it's like a recycler. How do I pick up tear for the tear machine? You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out. She shrugged awkwardly. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there. Okay, then. Saint Baptiste Pharmaceuticals. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with Various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, blah blah blah. Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Whoa. We do have those. What do those products do? Nasal spray, painkiller, dietary supplement. She stops on Hypnogamma. I don't really know what it is. I guess it makes you feel less shit. <laughs> it's recommended to use after lots of partying, studying or exercising. Thank you. Right, let's leave. What's this? Yellow roses. Now I need to talk to her. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. Hmm. I've got some questions. Um, Okay, I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Do you have a fridge? Right behind you, she nods towards the buzzer machine in the corner. You're right, this is a fridge. Wicked. I need to store a corpse there. She keeps chewing on her gum. You're joking, right? Measure the fridge with your fingers, one eye closed. Never mind, it would never fit. Shit. Hmm. Oh, that fridge, yeah, it's tiny. Hmm. So are these the... is this the trade union? Oh look, there's something on the floor. Money, give me. Forever Shawl, so this is like a tour guide. Jump Jams. Popular Music Mag. 
But let's keep looking around for anywhere that will have a fridge. Ah, there's bottles inside. I need a bag. What about the bin? This post laventurie mail collection box has been heavily vandalised with graffiti. Oil. Closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. Pat the box. The box seems happy. <laughs> Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the cun. And St. G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny as a whore. In a base set mailbox also. Mail collection box. You should man the fuck up. <laughs> the mailbox does not know how to man up. It's an inanimate object. Okay then. This. <laughs> oh, kick it. Kick it. Oh shit. That was a bad idea. There is a hollow, saddened ring as you kick the lavender mail collection box. It sounds betrayed in disbelief, even. Oh, pain threshold. Your toe has suffered damage, it hurts. Right. So, let's remember that we can't do things like that because it'll hurt us. <laughs> cool. The lieutenant nods approvingly. You really showed that mail collection box. Rub the, rub the toe. Let's go. You must say the box as the weaker of the two and you as a bully something he doesn't stand for hmm. this book has a rose a pistol and a half naked demon's cover oh right up my alley on the cover stands a very muscular man surrounded by flames so it's just various books Bookshop. Oh, hold on, let's yeah, go back. I want to have a word with that last. I should really ask all the clerks if they know anything about the dead body, even though I doubt they do. The only thing they'll probably know is that it's been there for seven days. A young girl with chubby red cheeks waves at you, smiling. Her nose is also red from the cold. I am the lure. Hello. I want to say hi. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? A new and exciting book. She stomps her feet to feel warmer. Tell you what I'm going to do. Hold on, can I? Just turn the voices up just a little bit. So wait there. Is it okay to ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. <laughs> Say, child, you wouldn't happen to know a good fridge, would you? Yes. A fridge. Yes, like a big fridge a cop could put a dead body into. <laughs> you mean like the ice bear fridge? Man, that's scary. Ice bear fridge. Yes, like a bear, but white. There's a fridge below the building in the basement. She points underground with red glowing eyes. I went back there once behind the bookstore. Okay. She lowers her voice. Mom doesn't want me to go there anymore. Not that I want to, it was pretty scary. And there's a big fridge there. Yes. One more thing, how do I get inside the building? Uh, that's a problem. The only way in is through the bookstore. But my mom is pretty strict about not letting anyone in. Okay then. But I don't know. You're a policeman. She says it with admiration, eyeing you up and down. Maybe you can convince her somehow. Anyway, she looks around. Again, her nose red from the cold. What's your name? My name's Annette, sir. My mom, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside mining the register or organising the stock. The girl gazes out the window then suddenly jolts her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our ways. So why are you standing out here? 
I'm signalling that the store's open, she nods eagerly, otherwise people might not know. They'd miss out on crime, romance and biographies of famous people. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counters. She covers her face, smiling, but she's cold. You're cold, can I help in some way? Such a good trooper you are, already learning the value of hard work. Kind of you to offer, sir. She doesn't know what else to say. What could you do to help her anyway? I should have a word with the store owner. Yeah, I think so. Oh no, sir. I'm happy to help my mum luring in customers. She stands upright and smiles like a little soldier. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. Oh, fair enough. Okay, see you around. Come on then. I heard you got a, a big ass fridge. Let's stick a cheeky save on the go. Right. What have we got here? Anything I can steal? Sports mugs. National receipt receipts of order. Aha! Shelf of crime novels. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Look through the display of books. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An, an asinine misinterpretation of the physical attributes and the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. They greatly overstate the excitement of police work. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all, sure thing. Now, would you like a list of the books found on the shelf? God, no. Shelves filled to the brim of crime novels featuring blah blah blah. Okay. Right, I'm not interested in that. Picture books, fascist magic, biographies, not interested, but what is this? Map wall, held by pins, the borders come loose in one corner. Look at the map of Inslind. Archipelagos, you see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the In... Cylindic Ocean. Logic in the northeast is Le Calieu. You are here. Another far away in the southwest. Seminese Islands. Ile de Fantôme. Ozone. Laurentide. Faced à la mer. Archip Archipelagos. North Arcade Islands. All just specks of dust on the vastness of the Incylindic. On the edges of the map, the contour fades into a blur of dotted lines. In the northeast, a dust might stands on the north coast of Kalu. In a bookstore, it's you. Radiant outwards from you, the Caesarean River Shawl, with a radius of 80 kilometres still, the crown jewel of this isola would barely be visible. Can you see cities on the islands? Look at the edges. Ocean breaks apart, blah blah blah. Connection to other worlds, past the Insulidane. Unsilindan. Unknown to you, you only... No, you've never been there. Blah, blah, blah. This is our shite. Not bothered about them. Right, come on. We're going to go and see the, the... I thought there might be some items to pick up, but not. Although I could buy them maps if I wanted to. Welcome to Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Good day. Be welcome. And please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. <laughs> I'll try to keep my energy in check. A golden pendant hangs around the woman's neck, in the shape of what looks like a tiny fish, head trapped in amber. I wonder if she's religious. Can you give me some money? What the... A curious pendant you're wearing. Oh yes, helps to have an anchor in these times. 
She clutches the pendant and narrows her eyes well. So you're the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice is high pitched as if to give it more penetration. She has fine tuned her voice to find the most welcoming approach for attracting new customers. It doesn't work. Yeah, I think people that do try to talk like that, it just... It doesn't work, does it? It's pretentious. Your daughter is the one standing right outside the store, right? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me. Was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yeah, she was. She was doing really well. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Oh, shit. Her opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. That is right. She's certainly playful and polite and helpful. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. She's immensely satisfied with the answer. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as Annette. Yeah, me too. I want to say, I want to big her up. I want to worm my way in there so I can ask for a favour. As a young girl should be, with a proper attitude, she'll have a bright future. Right, what's next? Now... I was told that there was a huge fridge in the building. A fridge? She fidgets with her pendant. No. I don't know anything about a fridge. Aren't you interested in books? She nods at the bookshelves. What if I were to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything on the shelves is to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? She fiddles with her pendant and waves her bony finger directly at you. See those shelves there? Go be drawn. All right. Tell you what, see if I can buy these maps, they seem the most interesting of the, the lot. I'm sorry officer, the map of Martinez is the only one available, the other two are not for sale anymore and besides, you could scarcely afford them. The map of Martinez is 90 cents though, why is the one so cheap? That old thing, it's an outdated map. Of a tourist location that never was nor came here. Some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago. They also renovated the horse statue, set up at the coin operator viewers, and designed the new street lamps. What happened? Didn't get far. For some reason, a shame the project was never the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Why can I not buy it? Do I not have 90 cents? I've only got 57 cents. What the fuck? Right, I'm going to leave that for now. Shit. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to crime... Re so what else can we do in here? Talk. Talk to the curtain. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Cage-like trinket? Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. I want to ex examine the trinket first. You see some kind of charm and a regular... Polyhedron, assembled from a bone, sticks and straws inside a disturbing fish head with empty eye socket stares at you. Is this some some voodoo? Who do you voodoo, bitch? Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut. What's behind here? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing books. She fills with her pendant. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. Oddly enough. The more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Fucking open them. Boom. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand has closed around her pendant. 
the fit is something nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done. If you decide to open them, I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. Calm yourself down, man. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? I sense this place is calling for me. This is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I am sorry, I don't mean to be impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. I need, I, I've heard there's a fridge there. Everybody suddenly needs something from there. She waves her hands angrily. Leave the curtains bay is what I want. Okay, so what's in there has a will and it wants you to enter. This is bad. It's not bad. I'm going in. No, she raises her hand to try and stop you. Please, just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through. Okay. Lies. Rip them open, we say. There is something mysterious beyond the curtains. About the curtains, be careful. The curtains tattered with age and covered in dust hang before you as if taunting you. Right, leave them for now. And now let's see if she's opened up a bit more. I want to find out what's going on. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you, it's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. Has she... Wait there. Has she kind of made some ritual or, or voodoo or, or, or magic or a deal with the devil? Where she's done something bad behind there in exchange for people wanting to buy loads of books. If it's just a storage room then why do you have that strange trinket on the curtains? It's just for decoration. She waves under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight lipped smile then something breaks. Okay fine. It's because this place is cursed. Just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Load of, load of, load of tripe. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Take it easy. You've broken her resistance. Pushing her further will gain nothing. Okay. Why didn't you just tell me right away? It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The neg negativism, she shivers. It's dangerous. Talking about the void wrath angers them. Such wraths may provide a formidable enemy, enemy suit up. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes. Numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Sem Seminese mediators. They provided me with the wards. Okay. They helped to keep the doom at bay. Is your pennant part of the wards? All oh, this, she holds the pennant to her palm. Its ochre heart glistens under the light. No, it's a special... Himian amulet, blessed by the desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. I knew it. So I knew that was that was the case. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had books anointed with different inducement spell, for example, she nods. It's guaranteed to boost sales. What a load of shit. How does this curse manifest itself? A shiver runs through the woman. She looks around the dimly lit store. The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease. Eaten at the very foundation. Her voice drops to a whisper. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't didn't that curtain just move? Okay, I'm a little confused. What does that mean? Everyone knows that all the previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy. And their malicious spirits are still there. Feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Sounds familiar. Don't mention it. 
She nudged her glasses anxiously and tense. Mmm, what should I do? I don't care about the curse, I just need to get to the fridge. Most certainly not. I'm not letting you open the gates of hell. In fact, I don't want anyone who isn't familiar with the psychic arts involved in this mess. Stay away, leave the spirits be. Psychic art sounds right down our alley. Okay, let's give this a shot. Drama. I've got a few more questions. How did I get back there? Right, I'm going to give this a shot. Drama. Oh, success. Slither up to her, your silver-tongued friend. Fiend, your silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidity look like. Mom, I came here to help. I've handled paranormal paranatural situation before are you sure she looks skeptical don't think i haven't seen charlatans before i've returned from the void a power detective from a long line of power detectives <laughs> you're no power detective you look like nothing like one and you're clearly a drinker pardon me for being so blunt but hey now hey hey you need the booze to focus all right the lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm he silently picks out his notebook go ahead then rock her world he thinks I'll compose some notes. I want to say this first one. You see, it's necessary to drink the spirits in order to contact the void. I want to say this one. How do you know all this? <laughs> Here we go. I am the void revenant. I have powers to bad all bad energies i should have realized a pattern lies within the fabric the hand of fate guides us our meeting could not have been more chance perhaps you truly are the one to deliver this woman from the doom but i'm not the only one at risk i have to think of my daughter you are certain you can help us keep us safe i can't allow my collateral damage to hit us no problem whatsoever your family is safe the phantoms are no match for me she shuffles nervously. If you promise, good officer, then she pauses. You might be your last hope. Do you swear it? I swear on my honour. <laughs> yes! Investigate the doomed commercial area. Thank you, sir. A timid sigh of relief followed by a cautious smile. There's one more thing I haven't told you yet about the entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of course, the entity. Close your eyes. For I have sensed its presence. You have, she gasped. The entity takes form of a woman. A witch, probably. I suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since. I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? Passes between heaven and hell, of course. <laughs> I'm going balls deep in this. Yes, the chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Right, I've got the key. Some natural magic, I assume, she shivers. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all of the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the water door behind the curtains, take it. Oh, and please, do return to me after you've looked around quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse, what you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What you discover? A demonic refrigerator? Perhaps the fridge will be the source of the curse. Farewell. Right, well, I think that went phenomenally well. Did not expect to go down that route. Talking about the bloody paranormal. Yeah, yay. Yeah. Oh, I'm such a manipulator, I love it. Pull the curtains aside. Shazam! You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered like dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. Small terrified, oh, escapes from Plaisance, 
as she tries her best to look away, her round face buried in her hands. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. Look, there's a face there. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Of a man. A heavy door with missing handles stands before you, covered in dozens if not hundreds of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Unlock the door with the key. After exerting some force you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent the door slides slightly open letting a draft of cold air into the room. You feel a tiny hair on the back of your neck stand up as if someone's standing right behind you. Oh I like this. Yeah, I wonder if this game does deal with the paranormal. If it does I'm going to love it even more. I'm not sure, I'm really not sure what it is. I'm kind of getting a Fahrenheit Indigo Prophecy vibe from this game. And an easy knot forms on the pit of your stomach. Open the, touch the back of your neck, what is this feeling? Outside the winds howl, in from across the bay, the building at Rue de Saint Gislaine stands like a matchbox on its side, with men inside like little wooden sticks ready to catch fire. Open the door. A panicked woman squeezes the pendant around her neck until it leaves a mark inside her palm. A man, a few metres away, stands frozen with a key in his hand. Somewhere inside a spider is spinning its web. It's weird that shivers thing, it's like... I wonder if it is sensing things happening around you. Oh, check this out. Punching bag. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. A shot put ball. Take it. It's worth four pound fifty. The poster says Citrius Fortis. Oh, I admit I missed what it said. Barbell. Worn out wool bars, they look unsafe. A barbell lies on the floor. The colour has worn off its weight plates. Trivial success. It's 60 kilogram. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast is dealing with it. Let them. Ooh, low, I'm not going to bother. Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, you're, def you're definitely not a weightlifter. No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber, the squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against the mat, and a whistle, then a feeling it's gone. Let's go up the stairs. Are there... I thought they said it headed down, not up. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Wait there, can we put the torch on? Now does this... Aha! See, that's so good. Oh, this is some creepy ass shit. A large... Demojon full of strange liquid. Wild animals. <laughs> Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Right, wait there, we can't get in there yet. What's in this drawer? Yes? No, 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 no. Move, Kim. Oh, nice. £3.12. Take it. A naked mannequin torso, a strange yellow colour. Mainframe. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer, says the lieutenant. Watching you circle around the machine, just sitting here without anyone in sight. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. 
but we're looking for a fridge and we're pressed on time so. On the other hand, it's not that I'm not interested in abandoning radio computers. Do you think I should turn it on? Maybe the body has stopped decomposing somehow. He looks over his shoulder. I don't know. You're in charge of this expedition, officer. Right. Is the lieutenant a little scared? Just know when he looks around. Right, I want to wait. Wait, 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 wait. I need to get the body sorted. We need to take note of this. We need to find the fridge. I need to stop it. That is... 14.32 Blue velvet softer touch Project Dead Dreadboard Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches and schemes like some ancient crave muriel. Some of the writing has faded with age but you can still make out sections here and there, photos, drawings. So this is passing time. Right, so whenever you make a choice, it passes the time. I've just figured that out. Right, come on. We, we haven't got time to do this. Scribbled across a notebook, developed as of the most advanced RPG in the universe. More money. Come down. Come down. Slipstream painted on some skis. Steel rotor blades. Production schedule. Filament memory. Okay. Now where's this bloody fridge? Have I went the wrong way altogether? Safety curtains. That's the. That's where the. She says this. That must be the chimney breast. Blocking the way to a colossal industrial chimney. This must be where the entity lives. Knock on it. <laughs> Fuck, I shit myself. Knock on it harder. Knock on it even harder. Those curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist hurts now. This is really an entrance to the chimney then, there must be a furnace somewhere as well. Maybe there's another way to get in. Can you please try to refrain from attacking random things? It's not random, it's significant. Why do you think there's necessarily something on the other side? The lieutenant asks, but you can see a spark of curiosity in his eyes. Okay, there's no way we can get in at the moment. Ah, what do we have here? Postcard. Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. Can I not have them? Right. We need to find a different entrance. I think we might have missed a door somewhere. Let's zoom out. That's the way we came in. Hmm. this 
frequency fireplace. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red markers. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on an alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. A diagram for summoning some time forgotten being. The symbols seem very es esoteric. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies it seems. Some written notes too. Sparse and cryptic. What are the frequencies for? Unclear. Looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. We're dealing with, a, with something medical here. You think so? The web is compromised, comprised of radio stations. All lead back to one red heart titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says this one can listen in on any situation at once. Looks like a surveillance program. Who's the game master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. Who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call station, it looks like. All of this gone left unrealized. My god, the lieutenant leans closer, his finger tracking some maddening rhizome. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Why do you say that? Schedule, he nods at the calendar on the chalkboard, wiping his marker, finger stain, fingers clean. I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble, an echo of times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Oh, look at doorman. That's what I was looking for. I thought it was a noteboard. That's why I didn't click on it. Here we go, baby. Money and magnesium. There's the fridge. Ice bear fridge. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment on its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. This ice bear is a hyper carnivore. Be careful. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble. The bear it's regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. Excellent. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim. It's a fridge, remember? Of course. A giant ice bear-shaped fridge. He relaxes his hand. His face bathed in harsh light of the open fridge door. Just when we were looking for some... Just what we were looking for. Let's see what's inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revishall Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. This is clearly the fridge. It looks big enough for two corpses. It certainly is an eccentric choice, but it's capacious and cold enough too. But the optics on this are awful, he thinks. We need to be as silent as we can. Shall we go and get the body then? I'll take the head, you take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. The two of you, easily. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> Fuck me, that was the loudest thing ever. Hold it, is... They've got some weird audio settings in this game. Like... Do you think the sound effects are tied to the voiceover volume? I'm going to have to leave it on there. Fucking hell, nearly burst my fucking eardrums, son. Right. The body is heavier than you expected and stinkier. It takes half an hour to get it down to the basement, then ten more minutes to stuff it inside the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. Yeah! Beautifully says, wiping his hands in his handkerchief. A dead body in an ice bear fridge. This is some of the best police work I've ever done. You've definitely earned a drink after this. Perhaps even some. Pagan rites. <laughs> yes, we need to celebrate by performing pagan rites. Let's bring out the mead and set it on fire. <laughs> you really think it's good work? No, not really. Look at that. What have we done? We've stuck a dead body in an ice bear fridge. The story does not leave this room. 
He means it. He didn't want to be the Ice Bear Cop. I think it's a glorious achievement. We did our best. I'm not proud, but we did need a fridge. This isn't police work, Kim. It's art. We're artists, and this is our vision. <laughs> we did our best with the means at our disposal. Did we, though? He sighed. Okay, well, maybe we did. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further now. You can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Low perception. Bag him. Take him away. I want to take the note from the door first. So what is this? You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets. Keep it on the door. That. Keep it, keeping it on the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks like nothing. It looks nothing like the fridge or the decomposed body in it. I wish the scroll scrolled more. Yeah, what is this giant bear fridge doing here? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in light. So they try to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore. I know, says the lieutenant. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What's even worse, the bear still costing them money. To this day, the lieutenant points at the red snaky cable running from the fridge. The electricity bill must be catastrophic. On the other hand, it did help us with a certain corpse situation. And look at us. Right. Let's speak to the dead man. Shoot, Looney Rooney. How do you like it in the fridge? <laughs> Where's me thing gone? This scroll does not work, you know. Well, the now it is the scroll. The scrolling didn't work on the menu system, it's really fucked. At the autopsy you said you had ancient mysteries. Oh yes, Kobo. Now I can do it. I like it a lot, brother. This really is your finest hour. You're a genius. A regular Copelangelo. Oh yes, Kobo Milobo. In the gift horse's mouth. Tracts and wakes and waterways, ancient materials buried. Yeah, but to wear it, brother. Just a small... I can't read it! There's got a... How do how do you scroll up? Look. You can't. You can't read it. It's fucking... It's stupid. Maybe I was getting my rocks off. Forget it. See, I just... Now, now we can kind of read it. Just a small gulp away, my beloved Kobo. A small gulp away. Right, let's stop talking to this guy. See, look, I can't get to the bottom. I can't get to the bottom to escape this, this, this thing. Hold on. There's no control options. Right, this is going to be a problem, this. Now I can go all the way up. Scroll down, scroll down. Hold on, I think I know why it does this. I set the text size to be high, but they've obviously never tested it. And now the text disappeared. Oh, great. <laughs> you have to, you have to have the text size on medium. Otherwise, you can't see all of your options. <laughs> oh, come on. Test your game, people. Right enough. Right then. I'm going to close the door for now. And we're going to save it. I want to have a quick wander about to see if I can find anything here. Other than the fridge. Ice cream maker, what's this? This looks good. 
The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Oh, hello there. Two rusty rifles hidden above a piping. They look inoperable. A hole in the wall. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Shine the light on the hidden compartments. There it is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Look inside. Your hand reaches deep into the darkness. In spider webs rummaging around, you find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim. Inspect the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable like the rest, but one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock. In better cosmetic order than the others. Take it. You're a police officer. Police officers carry guns. This one looks nice. Awesome. An old Bell Magov from the revolution. The lieutenant notes with approval. His eyes gleaming. Seems to be no longer functional but will. But still, a beautiful thing in its own way. What does it mean a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. So where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles, he points up. All the rifles under the ceiling. Must be an old weapons cache. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Ah, so we're in an old bunker. More ice cream. More health items and money. A breaker box. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Right, let's leave them for now. Intercom wires running through the breaker box. Where the hell are we going? Ah, okay. So that was a secret way in. Then again, I didn't even try that door. I wonder if it would have been locked. Or if I could have just waltzed straight in. We can go further downstairs if we want to, but I'm just going to clear this floor first. The wall collapsed. Central furnace. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, colouring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. <laughs> Look inside. It's dark and grimy here in the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other near the smoke chamber upstairs. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. I'm not sure I came but I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait really? He looks at the ceiling. Maybe it's coming from behind those safety curtains we saw upstairs. Oh, physical instrument high. Yell hello into the furnace. Do it. <laughs> Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny, voice, tiny voices above some suddenly cease then. Huh, you hear a woman's voice. You've awakened the entity. <laughs> Hello? Are you there? Speak to me. Get in. I found a way in. You hear a low rumble upstairs, the sound of a certain being, a curtain being pulled aside. Right then. 
leave. Well, that is a perfect place to end the episode. So, we've successfully preserved the body and we've got that to check out later. I want to see if I can maybe... Oh, we've got skills to level up, don't we? I could level up perception and stuff to examine the body, but I don't really want to. I'm not sure where I want to spend the skills. But we've preserved that, and when we get rid of Kim, hopefully at night time I can come down here and steal the boots, possibly. But we now got access to the curtain upstairs to go and see the people that's beyond. Right lads, I hope you enjoyed the episode, I hope you've enjoyed our detective work, and I'll see you in the next one for some more mystery and madness.